Tyson. I'm going to post a couple videos for you to watch after today's lesson if you have time or you're interested on Google Classroom. Before we begin, I just want to show you uh, an image of two ladies playing tennis. This is Serena Williams versus Venus Williams, two sisters and some tennis greats. And something that God has been teaching me lately is that prayer is kind of like a tennis game. And you can see right here is the ball. Um, but scholars, just like in prayer, um, the ball doesn't just go one way. It actually goes over here and then it comes back. And what happens is sometimes in prayer, we just give what we think and we just talk to God from our hearts, but we're not listening to him too. And so I just want to start today by listening to him first. And we're just going to look at this quick Psalm and then we're going to pray back to God like a tennis match. So the ball comes to us, we read God's word, and then we're going to push it back to him by praying to him. So here's what some verses say in Psalm 10, just three verses. The first one says, why, Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? This tells me that sometimes it feels like God is far away and hiding, even though he's not. Verse 14 you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it in hand. The victims commit themselves to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Wow, so even though God seems to be far away and hiding himself when I'm facing difficulty, he actually sees it all and he even takes it in his hand and he helps us. Verse 17, you, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry. Let's pray with this in mind, knowing that God does hear us. And so I'm going to use these words in my prayer today. We're going to pray for, continue to pray for, um, Christians in Nigeria, Christians in Ethiopia, India, and Nepal. And we're going to pray today for these scholars in 5th and 6th grade. So go ahead and pause the video and let's pray. Awesome. When you pray, you can use these words like this. God, thank you that even though it seems like you don't know what I'm going through right now, you actually do because your word says you do. And that's how you use, um, you, you, it's like you're playing tennis and you use these verses in that way. All right, let's keep going. Today's lesson is called A Widow Responds to Jesus. Here's our verse. He said to them, he said to them, you guys can repeat it. Ready? So it goes, I say, he said to them, you say, he said to them, go into all the world. You say it. Go into all the world. And preach the gospel to all creation. And preach the gospel to all creation. So I say it, then you say it. Ready? I'm going to pause when you say it. Go. Ready? <laughs> Just kidding. He said to them, go into all the world. And preach the gospel to all creation. Good. He said to them, he said to them, go into all the world. You say it. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation and preach the gospel to all creation. Good. We're going to continue with that um, tomorrow. Thanks for bringing in shoeboxes. Keep bringing them in. You need them in a little bit. We're also going to be talking today about what is true generosity. We study the Bible because close examination leads to a deeper understanding. Top three, observation, interpretation, application. Step one, annotate. Step two, retell. See if you can beat me. Step three, historical background. Step four, writer's message. Step five, gospel truth. Step six, gospel in action. And actually, you guys, we're studying all six. I keep forgetting to move that red line. Remember, for the application, we're thinking... What's the scripture? What does it say about Jesus? And what should I do as a result? Book of Mark, we're studying the place called Palestine. Here's the text. Go ahead and pause it, and you can read it together as a class. All right. Before um, we look at anything else, I just want you to take a look right now at the commentary. And I want you to focus on... Um, Focus on a couple of things. One, I want you to focus on, let's see. Um, sorry about this, guys. I'm just looking over here. I want you to focus on starting in Mark 12, 41 to 44, okay? Um, you guys, pick 
a fact from this last part of the commentary, read it together and pick one fact and put it on your paper. There is an exit ticket today. Go ahead and pause the video and read the commentary. Okay, great. Now put one fact on your packet so you're ready to answer the question. Pause the video. Okay, together, since you've already read it, come up with a theological principle and put it under a writer's message. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, great. The final thing to do before you do, there's race and there's the application. You can do it in any order, but since I'm here, let's pause the video and after I explain, you're going to read, for they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. What does this tell you about Jesus? Think about what he gave up. This verse is talking about the widow giving everything she had, giving up everything she had. How does that tell you about Jesus? What did he do that gave up everything that he had? Pause the video. Okay, now, since Jesus gave up everything he had, how should I respond to the gospel? What's something specific I can do today based on this passage? Pause the video. Okay, scholars, the last thing you need to do is your race, and the question is, what is true generosity? Now, before you answer, let's just watch the video of today's you know, text. Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, Why do the teachers of the law say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? The large crowd listened to him with delight. As he taught, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins, worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Wow, so she, that lady, the widow, showed generosity because she didn't just give out of her abundance, like, oh, I've got 10 bucks, I'll give a dollar. She actually gave all she had. I want you to answer that race question based on this and then do your exit ticket today. I'm going to post these two videos about giving and I will put um, that on um, Google Classroom. Scholars, use the rest of the time to work. I hope you have a really great day. Bye.